Hey guys, good day. Hey, I'm here looking at uh, on a Jewish website called Shabbat.org, and I was uh, seeing what they had to say about the lost ten tribes of Israel. It says, for thousands of years, adventurers and explorers have been fascinated by the legends of the lost lost tribes of Israel, along with Jewish scholars too. The whereabouts of the tribes have been subject to speculation and debate, while no one has ever conclusively identified them, we have hints and perhaps even glimpses of them throughout their long exile. Okay, so uh, if we go back to um, go back in history, what what are they even talking about the these um, these lost sheep? So the the lost, uh, I guess, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So we know that in 730 BC, after Saul, King Saul, King David. And King Solomon, King Solomon's son Rehoboam, he wanted to continue to tax the whole kingdom. And so the northern ten tribes split apart in 930 BC. And from 930 BC to 722 BC, there were two kingdoms. There was Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, and there was the southern kingdom of Judah. And in 722 BC, the northern kingdom of Israel was ransacked, overtaken by Assyria, and they all fled up into um, Asia Minor and Western Europe. Is that, that's what the that's what folks think. So, with that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that the Bible speaks of this this tribe, or the, I'm sorry, this uh, nation Israel, even though they're dispersed. So, the prophet Jeremiah, I went into the Bible Gateway, Bible Gateway search engine, typed in Israel and Judah. Okay, Judah is the southern kingdom of Judah, and Israel is the northern kingdom. So I'm, I'm looking at what the prophet Jeremiah has written uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And Jeremiah wrote after Israel, Israel had been ransacked. So this was around 600 B.C. he wrote this. And you can see what he says. He says, she saw that for all her adulteries of that faithless one, Israel, the northern kingdom, I had to send her, this is the Lord speaking, I had to send her away the, with a decree of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but she too went and played the whore. Then later on at some point, the Lord says, Faithless Israel has shown herself to be more righteous than treacherous Judah. So we see two houses under God. Still, he still thinks of them, even though they're dispersed, he still considers them to be a group, you know, the house of Israel. Let's see here, it says... Uh, so anyway, bottom line is this. I did a quick study. Sorry, guys. I did a quick study about this. And I want, I want to with that. But let's go to Scripture and see who the house of Israel, who the lost sheep of the house of Israel really are. Okay, so let's jump back to the present. Let me just make this statement here. And you guys should agree with this. It says, when Jesus returns to the earth, we know that the non-believing Jews in Jesus will join in their belief with the Christians, in their belief in Jesus, and there will be one flock under Jesus. So like I said, scholars have long debated the whereabouts of the lost ten tribes, the northern kingdom of Israel, or referred to as Israel in the Old Testament. Here's Hosea 8.14. This is an unfulfilled verse out of the book of Hosea. Remember, chapters 4 through 14 have never been fulfilled. They are future fulfillment. And look what it says. It says, For Israel... The lost ten tribes have forgotten their has forgotten his maker and built palaces. In Judah, the Jews have multiplied fortified cities. So I will send fire upon his cities, and it will devour her strongholds. Jeremiah three, and the Lord said to me, the faithless Israel has shown herself to be more righteous than treacherous Judah. We just read that uh, from Bible Gateway. So we see that there are two independent kingdoms in the past, Israel and Judah, and I would say there's two kingdoms or two beliefs or houses of belief in the future. So if we go back to the time of Jesus, when he walked the face of the earth, he was walking with his Jewish disciples. Remember, Jesus is of the tribe of Judah. He was walking with his Jewish disciples and he makes this declaration. He says, I was only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I was only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's kind of funny how he singled those guys out. He's speaking this. He said that while he was sitting, while he was walking with his um, his Jewish his Jewish um, disciples. Then a little while later, he made this other strange statement. He was talking to his Jewish disciples. 
He says, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, of this Jewish fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. So Jesus makes this reference to bringing another flock of believers who are not of that flock, of that Jewish flock, when he returns, and he will combine both flocks. So who is this other flock? Well, we know who it is. We know in Revelation 19 who's riding behind him, who is the Lord bringing with him. That's the bride of Christ. That's the Christians. So then we see this other reference to Jesus he makes about when he comes to sit on his ancestor's throne, King David's throne. He'll sit there for uh, 1,000 years in the millennium. But Jesus makes this reference in Matthew 25. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, comes in his glory, Revelation 19, and with all his angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Now we know that Jesus right now is not sitting on the throne. This hasn't been fulfilled yet. Matthew 25 is not yet fulfilled prophecy by Jesus. But look what the prophet Jeremiah wrote 600 years before Jesus made this statement. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, he said, And at that time Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall gather to it, to the presence of the Lord in Jerusalem. And they will no more stubbornly follow after their own heart. In those days, that would be in the future, the house of Judah shall join the house of Israel. So we know who the house of Judah is. That's the Jews. So in the future, the Jews are going to join the house of Israel. In the future, the Jews are going to join the house of Israel. So we've answered our question. Who is the house of Israel? It's the Christians of today. So like, like I said, when the prophet Jeremiah prophesied this in the future, he made it pretty clear who the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I have only sent for the lost sheep. He came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to save them. And that's who the modern Christians are today. And there's been many, many people from different genetics of the true Israelites from 722 BC that have been grafted in. But nonetheless, the house of Israel is the church of today. Now, we don't want to confuse ourselves with errant theories because there's something called replacement theology. And what does replacement theology say? Replacement theology, I'm reading from God Questions, essentially teaches that the church has replaced Israel in God's plan. Well, what really has happened is the church became the house of Israel. See, the original house of Israel, the original house of Israel, sorry, was right here, back in ancient times. These guys were dispersed up into the world, and then they became the Christians. So it's not like the church replaced the Jews. See, the, the problem with a lot of these folks when they write these they're getting confused who Israel is. A lot, of, a lot of times replacement theology says that the church replaced the Israel and they think of Israel as the Jews. They're not. Israel today is different than Judah. Judah are the Jews. Israel are the Western Christian nations. It's confusing. Look what Jacob said. Jacob said, told Ephraim and Manasseh, he said, let my name, Jacob said, let my name, Jacob and Israel, be on, be carried on, on these boys, Ephraim and Manasseh, who grew to be a multitude in the midst of the earth. This, this is nothing Jewish about this statement. So the bottom line is this, guys, I just wanted to make this clear, that the lost have been frown, found. The lost ten tribes of Israel, these guys here, that this article's about, these are the Christians. So when these Jews are lamenting, where did, our, where did our Israelite brethren go? Their Israelite brethren are the Christians. When they drive through the United States, there's a church on every street corner. That's the whereabouts of the lost ten tribes, guys. With that, have a great day, and God bless you.